Hello students, I am teacher Svetlana and in our today's lecture, we will learn about what is photosynthesis in the introduction, about the chloroplast, the nature of light and the mechanism of photosynthesis in the chapter photosynthesis. So let's begin. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis may be defined as the synthesis of carbohydrates that is glucose from inorganic materials like carbon and water with the help of solar energy trapped by the pigments like chlorophyll. We are already familiar with this equation that is carbon dioxide plus water in presence of sunlight as a source of energy and chlorophyll gives us sugars and oxygen. Students, photosynthesis is the only process on earth by which solar energy is trapped by green plants and converted into food. This process is unique to green plants and is the final light energy trapping process on which all life ultimately depends. Have a look at this image here. It gives you a clear idea about the process of photosynthesis. It is one of the most massive chemical processes going on on the earth. Atmosphere contains only about 0.03% carbon dioxide by volume. This small percentage represents 2200 billion tons of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The ocean contains over 50 times by amount of atmospheric CO2 in the form of dissolved gas or carbonates. From these two sources, about 70 billion tons of carbon is fixed by the green plants annually. Now students, we will understand about chloroplasts. They are mainly located in the mesophile cells of the leaf. Have a look at this image here. This is a leaf here and you can see that here you have the magnified view and these are your mesophile cells. These are called as palisade mesophile cells. These are called as spongy mesophile cells. Both these cells contain chloroplast. Here this chloroplast is taken out and magnified for you. The CO2 reaches them through the stromata and water reaches them through the veins. Have a look at this image here. This here is the stroma uh, which is also called as the stromata. These are small openings present in the epidermis of the leaf from where uh, the exchange of gases take place. That is CO2 can enter in. In higher plants, the chloroplasts are discoid or lens shaped. Each chloroplast is bound by a double membrane. Have a look at this image here. You can see these are your double membranes. Inside the membrane is found a ground substance called the stroma. This here is your ground substance that is called as the stroma. Inside the stroma is found a system of chlorophyll bearing double membrane sacs or lamella. This here are your lamellas. They are stacked one above the other to form the grana. So this here you can see collectively it is called as a granum and individually it is called as a grana. All the pigments, chlorophylls, carotenoids and xanthophylls are located in the thylakoid membrane. Have a look at this image here. This is your thylakoid membrane. These pigments absorb light of specific spectrum in the visible region. The pigments are fat soluble and located in the lipid part of the membrane. With the help of certain enzymes, they participate in the conversion of solar energy into ATP and NADPH. The enzyme of the stroma utilizes this ATP and NADPH to produce carbohydrates. Two predominant types of chlorophylls. Chlorophyll A and B differ in the nature of groups. Chlorophyll A has a methyl group that is CH3 while chlorophyll B has an aldehyde group, the CHO group. Chemically, chlorophyll molecule consists of two parts of tetrapyrrole, the profyrin ring and a long hydrocarbon tail called the phytol attached to the profyrin group. Carotenoids are lipid compound present universally in almost all the higher plants and several microorganisms. They are usually red, orange, yellow, brown and are associated with chlorophyll. There are two types uh, of uh, carotenoids, the carotenes and the xanthophylls. The carotenes are orange-red and xanthophylls contain oxygen. 
the light energy absorbed by the carotenoids is transferred to chlorophyll A to be utilized in photosynthesis. Have a look at this image here. This is a list of the different uh, photosynthetic pigments and their colors. Students, all photosynthetic plants have these pigments that absorb light between the red and the blue region of the spectrum. Carotenoids found mainly in higher plants absorb primarily in the violet to blue region of the spectrum. They not only absorb light energy and transfer it to chlorophyll, but they also protect the chlorophyll molecule from photooxidation. Now students, let us have a look at the nature of light. Light is a form of energy. It travels a stream of tiny particles called photons. A photon contains a quantum of light. Light has different wavelengths having different colors. One can see electromagnetic radiations within the wavelengths ranging from 390 nanometers to 730 nanometers. Have a look at this image here. This small region is the region of a visible light it is magnified for you further you can see it starts here at 390 nanometers and ends at 730 nanometers this part of the spectrum is called as visible light it lies between wavelengths of ultraviolet and infrared region you can see here on one side there is the ultraviolet and the other hand there is infrared radiation so it just lies between this region now let us know about the absorption and the action spectrum. All the pigments of the chloroplast absorb light quanta of photons and transfer the absorbed energy to chlorophyll A. The amount of light absorbed by each wavelength can be shown in the form of a graph. It shows different curves at different wavelengths. Such a curve which shows the amount of light absorbed at each wavelength is termed as the absorption spectrum. Have a look at this image here. This shows the absorption spectrum. You can see here the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B clearly shows that more light energy is absorbed at the blue, violet and the red region. The relative rate of photosynthesis at different wavelengths indicates a close relationship with the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll A and B. This curve that shows the rate of photosynthesis at different wavelength is called as action spectrum. Have a look at this image now here. You can see the wavelength of light in nanometers. So this is the rate of photosynthesis and this is the rate of absorption that is taking place. So this is your uh, action spectrum that is uh, to understand this in detail. Uh, we have to understand that the action spectrum of photosynthesis is different from the absorption spectrum. There is quite a lot of photosynthetic activity even in the part of the spectrum where chlorophyll A absorbs little light. This infers that light energy absorbed by other pigments that is yellow and orange carotenoids these are also the and also the other forms of chlorophyll is all transferred to chlorophyll A. So even if there is less uh, light that is absorbed, uh, you can see here that the amount of light absorbed is less by the pigment, but the photosynthetic activity rate is equally high. So this indicates that all other pigments also harvest their light and they transfer it to chlorophyll A. So this is called as the action spectrum. Now students let us have a look at the mechanism of photosynthesis. In 1931 Van Neel proved that bacteria used hydrogen sulfate and carbon dioxide to synthesize carbohydrates as follows. 6CO2 plus 12 H2S will give you your uh, sugar plus 6 water molecules plus 12 molecules of sulfur is given out. This led Van Neel to postulate that in green plants, water is utilized in place of hydrogen sulfate and O2 is evolved in place of sulfur. Rubain in 1941 confirmed it in cholera. He used water labeled with heavy oxygen that is 18O2 that is he used a water molecule with labeled uh, radio labeled oxygen that is H218O. The oxygen evolved contain 
1802 thereby proving van Niels hypothesis that oxygen evolved in photosynthesis comes from water this led to the currently accepted general equation of photosynthesis that is 6 co2 plus 12 h2 o18 in presence of light giving you c6h12o6 plus 6 water molecules plus 6 molecules of the radio labeled oxygen in 1937, R. Hill demonstrated that isolated chloroplast evolved oxygen when they were illuminated in presence of suitable electron acceptor such as ferricyanide. The ferricyanide is reduced to ferrocyanide by photolysis of water. Photolysis of water means students the breakdown of water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen in presence of sunlight. This is called as Hill's reaction. And thus, Hill's reaction proves that in photosynthesis, oxygen is released from water. Electrons from the reduction of carbon dioxide are obtained from water. According to Arnin, in this process, light energy is converted into chemical energy. This energy is stored in ATP and NADPH, which are formed as hydrogen donors. In this ATP formation is known as photophosphorylation. Students here, this ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate and NADPH stands for nicotinamine adenine dinucleotide phosphate. In modern concept, the process of photosynthesis is an oxidation and reduction process in which water is oxidized to release oxygen and carbon dioxide is reduced to form sugar. It consists of two successive series of reaction. The first reaction requires light and so is called as the light or the Hills reaction. The second reaction does not require light and is called as dark or Blackman's reaction. Of the two reactions, the former is a photochemical reaction while the latter is a biochemical reaction. We will see in detail what happens in the light and dark reaction in our next lecture. Thank you students for participating in this lecture. See you soon again with the next topic. Till then, take care, be safe and keep learning.